Are portable solar panels expensive, inefficient toys? Or can they really compete with proper rigid panels? Today, I'm putting four solar panels to the test. A Longi 505 watt rigid panel, an EcoFlow 450 watt rigid panel, an Afri 400 watt folding solar panel, and then two all powers 200 watt flexible solar panels that are wired in parallel so that they will also produce 400 watts. I'll be measuring them side by side using my EcoFlow Stream Ultra with four MPPTs so each panel gets a fair accurate test. Stick around because by the end of this video we'll know once and for all whether portable panels are actually worth your money. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future tests or anything that could really help you in the future. Now let me say at the outset with full transparency that I've had very good success with portable solar panels. I know that the internet is full of people saying that portable panels just don't compare to conventional rigid ones, that they're less efficient, that they're overpriced, that they're gimmicks. But for me, portable solar panels play an important part. So the key question is, how much performance are you really sacrificing for portability? That's exactly what I'm testing today. So here's my four contenders in a little bit more detail. Number one, this is the Afri 400 watt fold-in solar panel. I've very much enjoyed using this because it has so many kickstands, so it's not wibbly wobbly like most of the fold-in ones and it packs up nearly under 10 kilograms, so it's almost the same weight and easily as manageable as our 200 watt Blue Etty solar panel, but for double the output. Folds up nicely, good handle, seems to do everything nicely, claims 23% efficiency, that's what we're gonna to put to the test today. Comes with an XT90 adapter, and crucially, you don't need to run it with a power station because it has USB outputs. I think it's three, uh, two USB A's and one USB C. So it could do up to 100 watts over USB C power delivery, which is quite impressive. That's all bundled in together. And at the moment on their website, 500 pounds. Secondly, all powers SF9, SF200s. You've seen these on the channel before. Whether you love them or hate them, I know there's been some controversial comments about these flexible solar panels and how will they last in terms of longevity over a few years. I don't know, for me, they seem to work okay. 200 watts each, so I'm connecting two of these in parallel to put them into one MPPT. Once again, they claim 23% efficiency. And the weight on these, do, 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 these are quite light. So 4.1 kilograms each, so a pair of those, 8.2 kilograms. And um, of course, not quite as practical when you're taking them out and about because you need something to lean them against really to get the optimum generation out of it. Otherwise, you're just putting them flat on the surface. You're never going to get the most out of them. Of course, you've seen many times before on this channel the 450 watt EcoFlow rigid panels. They also claim 23% efficiency. Uh, they're an all black design, but I've shown you in further detail on another video that you can see all of the little conductors and elements and everything on that when you're up close. Um, anyway, um, not the best value for money when it comes to rigid solar panels, £400 for the pair. So it's £200 for the panel that I'm testing today. And of course, as you know, some of my favourite Longi panels. That's what I've got 22 Longi panels on my house roof. I've now got six of them on my shed roof. 505 watt. They're the Hymo X6 Max. And when they say they are an all-black solar panel, they really mean it. Longi also claimed 23% module efficiency. Okay, so there's nothing between the claims in terms of efficiency. This is the beastiest one of all, 24.8 kilograms. Did I tell you the EcoFlow weight? Uh, I think it's 22.4. It's down here somewhere. 22.4 kilograms. I was right. Good. Um, now, here's a little comparison chart for you, okay? Um, as we've been through all the specifications, they are different wattages. So we're going to put some correction factors in once we get the test results so that we can level the playing field. You can see, of course, the different weight and the cheapest panel is the heaviest one. And, it, you know, you pay for convenience sometimes, but also potentially longevity. I don't know. I've broken down the current cost of what I can currently buy them for and then I've divided it by the 
peak wattage that these are uh, these are rated to under standard test conditions and that gives me a price per watt okay 14 p per watt 44 p per watt one pound 25 per watt 95 p per watt and on top of that there's some other bonuses of course the Afri is really the only one that's conveniently portable so you're going to pay a premium for that convenience it also comes with a three-year warranty an extra year compared to the all powers ones and it has those usb ports for some reason i've put two here but i think that they've got three so uh, usb ports either way you don't need to connect it to any inverter power station anything like that you can just take the solar panel and then you can just plug your devices directly into it the EcoFlow Stream Ultra is making this possible with its four MPPT inputs. That means every panel gets its own independent tracking. So there's no interference, no unfair advantage. The test means the same sunlight conditions, the same angle, the same orientation. And we'll measure the real-time watts and we'll compare the output versus the rated spec. Okay, 9.37, no, oh, just hit 9.38. Now we've got no shade on the solar panels. So this is how we're gonna hook it up, okay? We're gonna start with the big 505 watt panel. We're gonna put that on PV1, okay? PV1 is down on the right hand side here. Now we're going to go for the 450 watt EcoFlow. That's going to go on PV2. We're going to remember this because it's going to go from largest to smallest. And now we are going to use the Afri folding panel, which comes down on these here. Thank goodness for having a whole load of uh, MC4 extension cables to hand. PV3 for the Afri. And finally, last but not least, we've got the All Powers going parallel in that joiner there. And this is going to go on PV4. You don't want to see my knee. Okay, now let's go. Right, not too much strain on any of those cables. Okay, I'm gonna show you on the EcoFlow app how we're starting off and then we'll come back to it in maybe an hour or so. So straight away it says we are charging 846 watts. And if I click on here, it should tell me, okay. Right now, oh, PV1, that's our big long E 505 watt panel, it's doing 270 watts. PV2, that's the EcoFlow 450 watt panel, it's 215. PV3 is the two, oh no, PV3 is the Afri, that's doing 181 watts. And PV4 is the two all powers, which are doing 186 watts. Now let's put some correction factors on all of that. So we've got a level playing field and let's allow it to do its thing for a little moment. I've taken a quick screenshot so we can have a look at some of the initial results. Now you can see that they are lined up roughly in the order that we expected. PV1 is the 505 watt panel, PV2 is 450 watt panel, PV3 and PV4 should be 400 watts of solar. And so let's put some correction factors on that. Okay, so this first little snapshot is quite interesting. Once we put the conversion factor, so what we're doing is we're dividing the EcoFlow 450 watt panel by 1.125, which brings it down to 183 watts, which is almost exactly the same as the AFRI there, 185 watts. That's well within the margin of error, two watts. But interestingly, the Long E Hymo X6 Max if we divide that by its correction factor of 1.26, that comes out at 222 watts, significantly more than the others. That's a solid 21% increase between the EcoFlow rigid panel and the Longy rigid panel. So let's look at a few more snapshots in time and see how it compares going forward. 
Okay, now under lower light conditions, you can see here now, interestingly, the AFRI is now 5 watts ahead of the All Powers uh, 200 watt panels. I did notice that this seems to be a consistent trend under direct, very strong sunlight. The All Powers does seem to generate slightly better than the AFRI both 400 watt ratings but as soon as there's any cloud cover lower light dispersed light the AFRI seems to win every single time now if we bring in the correction factors once again that leaves our EcoFlow rigid panel at 69 watts compared to 63 for the AFRI and it leaves the long E panel at 73 watts compared to 63 for the AFRI so once again a uh, difference between the long E and the EcoFlow the long E panel's 5.8% improvement uh, compared to the EcoFlow ones I'm just trying to slow down the rate that it charges at so plug this portable power station in, charging off one of the AC sockets off the Ultra so that we can just absorb a bit more of that sunlight energy. Okay, now this seems to be the peak output that we produced today with the clearest, most direct sunlight, 1148. So after that, the sun really wasn't at the perfect point in the sky. Um, we, of course, 462 watts on the surface looks very impressive on PV1. That's for the long E505 watt panel. But once we put the correction factor in, that's 367 watts. The EcoFlow uh, rigid panel comes down to 348 watts. And, of course, that then starts to get in the realm of those All Powers ones. And only less than 50 watts ahead of the AFRI folding panel. Not too bad at all. It's a, once again, it's a 5.5% um, increase from the EcoFlow rigid panel up to the Longy panel in terms of performance. So what do you think about that? Let me know. That's just the data. What's your conclusion from what I've pre presented so far? And that's going to be a wrap, everyone. You can see on PV3, the first panel is now getting shade from the trees behind our house. So it's dropping off significantly. We have charged both of these devices. The AC Pro has gone from 8% to 89%. The Ultra has gone from 8 to 93%. We fully charged our FossiBot power station as well. Here's the generation totals. And on the right-hand column, I've put them with the correction factors. So 1,000 watt hours for the Long E panel, 951 for the EcoFlow, 821 for the Afri, 838 watt hours for the All Powers. Yes, the rigid panels still perform best on a cost per watt basis, but look at how close some of those portable panels actually get. They're not as far behind as people complain. When you consider the weight, the convenience, and the flexible ways that they can be implemented. So rigid panels are unbeatable if you're doing a permanent install like on your roof or in your garden, but portability has its place. Folding or flexible panels can power your camper van, charge batteries in a summer house or give you off-grid energy when you're away from home and as we've just seen performance isn't always the huge compromise that the critics suggest so the real question for you isn't really about efficiency at all it's whether that flexibility is worth it to you for your lifestyle for your use case would you pay the extra for the convenience of something that's manageable like that AFRI 400 watt panel so here's my wrap up and my conclusion. Are portable solar panels inefficient rubbish based on today's test? No, they actually perform really well. They may cost more per watt, but many deliver very respectable performance and can be a brilliant option for portable or semi off-grid setups. What would you power with a portable solar panel? Let me know in the comments. If you found this test useful, hit like. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to be putting loads more gear like this through real world tests so you know what actually will work for you. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.